Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary. On Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary, paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down, O oh glory. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services of our church for Sunday, October the 2nd. We will sing several songs. Our songs will be sung from our songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. We will observe the Lord's Supper, and I will have a message for you that I hope will be beneficial and uplifting. Um, since you may not have this particular book, but if you have a device that you can uh, Google the names of the songs or a different song book, I will give you the name of the song and the number uh, so that you'll have the opportunity to look it up and to sing along with us. So the first song that we're going to sing is entitled Whispering Hope. Whispering Hope. In our songbook, it is number 497, 497, Whispering Hope. <clears throat> Soft as the voice of an angel, breathing a lesson unheard. Hope with a gentle persuasion whispers her comforting word. Wait till the darkness is over. Wait till the tempest is done. Hope for the sunshine tomorrow after the shower is gone. Whispering hope, oh how welcome thy voice, making my heart in its sorrow rejoice. If in the dusk of the twilight Dim the region of far, will not the deepening darkness brighten the glimmering star? Then, when the night is upon us, why should the heart sink away? When the dark midnight is over, watch for the breaking of day. Whispering hope, oh how welcome thy voice, making my heart in its sorrow rejoice. Hope as an anchor so steadfast rends the dark veil from the soul. Whither the Master has entered, robbing the grave of its goal. Come, then, a glad reunion. Come to my sad, weary heart. Come, all that blessed hope of glory. Never, oh, never depart. Whispering hope. Oh, how welcome thy voice, making my heart in its sorrow rejoice. Uh, 213. 213. The title of the song is He is Able. 213.
He is able. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. Before the Lord's Supper, number 364. That is, come share the Lord. Come share the Lord. 364. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here, everyone belongs. Finding our forgiveness here, we in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here, he breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most, is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. Binding and meets us here. In the breaking of the bread, we'll gather soon, where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Each week we are instructed to gather together to break bread. That's what the uh, 20th chapter of Acts in the 7th verse tells us. It is an integral part of our worship service, along with prayer, along with giving, along with getting into the Word of God. Perhaps the crowning event in all worship service is uh, breaking bread, communing with the Lord, remembering Jesus' death uh, and his sacrifice for each one of us. Uh, it is something that we must take so seriously. It is something that's so vitally important to us that we dedicate this amount of time during the service uh, to thinking of Jesus crucified uh, for your sins and my sins. The two emblems are the bread representing Jesus's body and the, and the fruit of the vine representing his blood. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus and your divine plan came to earth as a human. Uh, we know that under the old law, sacrifices were made of animals and uh, even plant offerings. But when Jesus made his sacrifice, the days of those sacrifices were done because we know that his sacrifice was perfect. He gave up his body for us. 
And as we partake of this bread, let's think of that body. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We give you thanks, dear Heavenly Father, uh, and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he was willing to shed his innocent blood that we might have forgiveness of sins, that your grace may come upon us, and that we might one day enter into the next kingdom uh, with you eternally. We know that it is only through the blood of Jesus that uh, forgiveness of sins is possible. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we would be worthy of that sacrifice as we partake of this fruit of the vine. We pray this in his most glorious name. Amen. As the Lord's Supper is completed, we have another uh, aspect of our worship service, and that is the contribution, the giving back to the Lord. This was also instituted to the first century church, and we have example after example of those that gave. Uh, very, very early, they laid the money at the apostles' feet. We don't have those apostles anymore. We give that money back to the church, the kingdom of God here in uh, on earth, so that uh, more souls can be saved that more in need can be served. And we just pray that the stewards of this money would uh, would would just do that and that uh, uh, you would be satisfied with our giving. Let's pray. We just thank you to Heavenly Father for the opportunity that we have to give back, knowing that all good things come from you. We give you what is yours. We know that when we leave uh, this uh, earth and, and our physical bodies die, that uh, we will take nothing with us physical. Uh, it is the spiritual part of us that will ascend with you. And we just pray that uh, we understand that is this physical part here on earth that helps to the church to do what it is supposed to do. Help us to give with an open heart. Help us to give with gratitude. Help us to give cheerfully. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is number 538. My hope is built on nothing less. 538, old time hymn. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. 
dressed in his righteousness alone, fall blessed to stand before his throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. I hope many of you were able to sing along with us, and uh, I know the Lord was praised through our song, and I know that we were all uplifted by uh, singing praises to the Lord. You may have noticed uh, a, a theme in all of the songs, and that theme was hope. And that is what the lesson uh, of the evening is about. Uh, it is called longing for hope. Longing for hope. When you go to the dictionary to find a, a definition of uh, the term hope, it says the feeling of what one desires will happen. That's pretty cool. And it actually fits into um, the lesson and it fits into what godly hope is all about. The feeling of what one desires will happen. Now, we have many, many scriptures that deal with hope. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, uh, tells us that faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. In 2 John 12, it talks about the hope to come because we have a hope of a great place that will come. And in that great chapter 13 that of, of 1 Corinthians, the, uh, the chapter that we like to call the love chapter, uh, it says, hope all things. Hope all things. You know, I, I think that uh, sometimes we perhaps abuse the word hope a little bit. And I say this kind of with tongue in cheek because we use... Uh, this term in an everyday uh, vernacular. Uh, uh, I hope that this meal is good. Uh, I hope that this new restaurant we're going to uh, has good service and good food. Uh, I hope the weather is nice uh, tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> on a baser level, I hope my team wins this week. I hope my team wins the World Series. I hope my team wins the Super Bowl. I hope my favorite player wins the U.S. Open. These are hopes. Now, if we take the dictionary definition, the feeling of what one desires will happen, they fit. They fit the definition of hope. Now, with that in mind, the hope mentioned in Scripture has a whole different connotation. All right? It has a whole different connotation. The word in Romans 15, 13, for example, is the Greek word, and, and again, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I was able to find this. The Greek word is elpis, E-L-P-I-S. If you uh, are so inclined, you can go ahead and look that up. Elpis. Here's what it says. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. There's a lot of meat on that bone, isn't there? Now be the God of hope. And so this scripture tells us that our God is the God of hope. We talked about whispering hope. We we talked about it. We sang about whispering hope. We sang about it. my hope is built on nothing less. All right. Um, this says that our God is a God of hope. 
So here is the real root, the real foundation, the real genesis of what uh, spiritual hope is all about. Now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. Because our God is a God of hope and our hopes are very high hopes, they are hopes that transcend. I hope this meal is good. I hope my team wins. I hope the weather will be nice. Now, all of those are okay. But this hope is magnificent because this is the hope given by God who Paul describes as the, the God of hope. And it will give us joy and peace. I got news for you. Um, good food won't bring us joy and peace. Our team winning won't bring us joy and peace. And whether the weather is warm, cold, rainy, or whatever, it will not bring us joy or peace. But our God of hope will bring us joy and peace. It, in this case, it, it means looking forward to something with confidence. Now again, the dictionary definition in this case kind of fits. It says the feeling of what one desires will happen. Um, it is looking forward to something, but looking forward to it with confidence. I can't have confidence that my team will win or the food will be good, but I can be confident that God is the God of hope and he will bring me joy and peace. It, I believe, is an expectation that each of us as Christians ought to have. We have hope because we call God our Father. We call Jesus our brother. God set the world into spin. And at just the right time, he allowed Jesus to come to earth. Jesus, the wonderful master teacher, spoke to us in lessons that we read over and over and over again. In my daily devotionals each morning that I send out, uh, uh, my, I've done a series on the parables of Jesus, the wonderful teachings of Jesus. We have this, this wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, son of God who taught to us in parables. Now, there's a difference between Christians and non-Christians. And I believe one of the central differences is the difference in hope. Because the reality of it is, non-Christians, people of the world, have nothing to hope for. When they die, it's all over for them. They don't think there is anything else on the horizon to look forward to. Uh, you know, uh, people look forward to payday. Uh, <laughs> we have days of the week that we number. We look forward to Wednesday. We call it hump day. Uh, at, in the workforce, because that's the middle day of the week. And when we pass this day, we're downhill <laughs> in our work week. And on Friday, for goodness sake, we had that TGIF thing that we're so glad that Friday has, has happened to us. So the people of the world can look forward to these things. And by the way, we can look forward to them uh, also. Uh, people of the world and Christians can look forward to uh, going on vacation. But here's the thing. Every one of those things comes to an end. I'm not going to tell you not to go on vacation. I'm not going to tell you not to go to work. I'm not uh, 
telling you, uh, don't look forward to getting the pay for the job that you do. That's okay. But see, one day that will be over. You know, when we pass bodily from this earth, there'll be no more paydays of that sort, at least of that sort. Okay, there'll be no more vacations. There's something bigger. And for Christians, that bigger thing is given to us by our God of hope. It is the joy and the peace that we find that we understand that there is a place reserved for us. There is a bigger thing than what we have in this body. First Peter chapter five and verse 10 is an incredible verse that describes the hope that we have. It's first Peter chapter five, verse 10. It says, after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. There's hope that we will be established in the Lord's eternal kingdom. It is something that we can look forward to. Now remember, the, the Hebrew writer in Hebrews 11.1 1 says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Our faith revolves around that which we hope for. And that which we hope for is living eternally with our Lord. This is true hope. This is real hope. This is the God of, un of, the, of the universe telling his children what's in store for them one day. Now, we as Christians may not configure this in our, our, our little finite brains every day. But interestingly enough, the world, I can say with confidence, is lost. We have what they need. We have the hope of life after this life. They're desperate for guidance because they're lost. They're desperate for purpose because they have none. They're desperate, get this, for hope because the world offers nothing to those who are struggling. God has instructed us. God has given us the wonderful teachings of Jesus Christ. He's given us the wonderful uh, Holy Spirit inspired writings of godly men. And he has entrusted us, get this, to the answers to life. And with that in mind, we have this knowledge that Peter talks about in Second Peter chapter uh, uh, 2, and add to your faith, virtue, to your virtue, not. What are we going to do with this knowledge? All right? What are we going to do with it? Well, what we're going to do with it is we're going to take this knowledge and put it into our heads and say, all of this knowledge lets me know that I have a hope of something greater. I have a hope of living eternally with the Lord. My hope is to come. I am to hope all things. Why? Because we have a God who loves us. We have a God who wants everyone to come to him. He wants everyone to become his children. That's why he sent Jesus to travel the earth for a couple of short years 
to, to spread these wonderful truths about what life is really about. Uh, they've given us a kingdom here on earth that we call the church as a, as a dress rehearsal for the kingdom of heaven where we are eternally live with the Lord. Jesus proclaimed to his disciples when they were so worried and, and when he tried to reveal to them that, that he was going to leave them. You know, they were almost in a, in a fantasy world or of sorts. They had a man who did miracles. They had a man who had teachings that were amazing. And he's saying, okay, it's going to be over soon. But he said this to give them hope. He said, where I'm going, you will one day come also. Where I'm going is a, is a mansion with many house, many rooms and there's a room prepared for you. We must believe this as children of God. Why? It is our hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I hope this message has resonated with you. It was simple, but it was to the point, explaining our longing for hope because our God is a God of hope. That hope comes to those truly who are in his kingdom. And so God gives us through his inspired word how to get into the kingdom here on earth. It says that we must confess that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, that he died for our sins. We must repent of our former lives and be baptized for the remission of our sins. I offer you that invitation this evening. If you need to respond to it, please do so. Please get in touch with us. We are uh, at your call to help you to start your Christian life so that the hope the longing for hope will be there. It will be a concrete thing rather than an abstract term, knowing that we can live with God forever. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the hope that we have in you. We're grateful that, that uh, you are a God of hope and that you will bring us joy and peace, not only the joy and peace of an abundant life here on earth, but the joy and peace and the knowledge that we will uh, uh, have the desire of, uh, of going to heaven and that will come to fruition. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we uh, walk our Christian walk. Help us to uplift one another. Help us to be the brothers and sisters in the Lord that we ought to be as we are journeying, hopefully, to the same place. Continue to be with us, continue to guide us, continue to strengthen us, and continue to comfort us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all. Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary. On Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary. Paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. Salvation has been brought down, O oh glory, praise, praise the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Salvation has been brought down from heaven, go and show and show and show and tell the world around. Go preach it and tell today to people in sorrow, tell today.